The book of Jude, after watching the video and seeing about impacting somebody else's life, I was thinking about these verses. Verse number 20, it says, But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We are grateful to be able to do anything for your name's sake. Lord, you've done so many great things for us. It's a privilege to be able to do anything. And Lord, we pray for every one of those children that Lord was in that video. That Lord, they not only received a good meal, because many of them, come from ghetto areas where they never see that kind of food. Lord, not only did they receive a, a toy and some uh, school supplies, and many of them never see anything like that, but Lord, I pray that they'll receive Christ, and they'll understand that all that was done because people loved them because of what Jesus done for them. And God, I pray that, Lord, they'll uh, realize that there's more to church than meal and a toy. Jesus really is the reason for the season. I know they were taught that, and I pray that, Lord, you'll impact those children's lives from here through eternity. I pray you'd give traveling mercies to the heralds on their way home. I do pray for uh, Brother Brian and Miss Veronica's traveling, others that are traveling, give them traveling mercy. Now, Father, I pray you'd bless every Sunday school class now. I pray that the Word of God would become fresh and anew, and God, we'd hide it in our hearts that we might not sin against Thee. I do pray, Father, for the jail service going on right now. You'd bless in it, and we certainly do pray for the worship hour that, God, You'd show up in a great and mighty way. Father, I pray You'd touch hearts today. I pray the saints of God would be revived, and I pray the lost would be saved. Now, Father, get glory to Your glorious name, and thank You again for letting us have a small part and what you did on the island this weekend. And again, Father, we pray you'd get glory, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we do pray. Amen and amen. In the furtherance part of the video, you do find Naj serving food. That was a sight, but uh, uh, it is uh, uh, certainly a blessing to have a small part. In these verses, uh, I want you to notice the importance of some things. First of all, I want you to notice the importance of the Scriptures. In Jude verse 20, it says, But ye, beloved, it's talking to saved people. Unsaved people, this doesn't merit them anything. They can't get any help from this until they come to know the Savior. It says, But ye, beloved, saved people, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. We find that we are to build on our foundation of faith and we're to build ourselves on faith and build up our faith. And the only way we can build up our faith, we find in, in Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. So we see the importance of the Scriptures. Brother Doug, why do we have to have Sunday school? Well, Brother Doug, why do we have to have preaching? Why do we have to have teaching all the time? Uh, so we don't increase our faith. Uh, a lot of people have tried to dumb down the things of God in order to gain the masses, and they'll do all kinds of things from theatrical things to uh, uh, all kinds of different music programs and all that. And uh, listen, a, a play every now and then, a, 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 a cantata or singing every now and then, those things are, are a blessing. They're a whipped cream and uh, cherries on top of the, of the ice cream. But if you're going to have what you need to be sustained in this world, you need the Word of God. And if you're going to impact somebody else, you can't do it outside the Word of God. We see the importance of the Scriptures. That's why you need to have a steady daily diet of them. That's why you need to digest them on your own. You need to read them on your own. You need to uh, uh, learn on your own. And uh, what you get when you come to the house of God ought to reinforce everything you're getting in your daily life. But that's how your faith is increased through the Scriptures. We see the importance of supplication. He says, praying in the Holy Ghost. He didn't say praying vain prayers or repetitious prayers. The Catholics do that. They pray our fathers and Hail Marys. And that's what they do. 
they say the same words over and over and over and over and over. And the Bible even tells us that God doesn't hear those vain repetitions. God hears prayer from the heart. In Romans 8, we're exhorted to pray and that the Holy Ghost will intercede on behalf of our heart to God when we do pray. And praying in the Holy Ghost is simply stopping, not saying a bunch of words to God, but seeking God's assistance in your prayer life to te teach you how to pray properly and to pray what will bring honor and glory to God. Learning to listen to the Holy Ghost and pray what He tells you to pray. So we find that uh, it's important to pray and pray properly. It's important for to have the Scriptures to build up our faith. But we also see the importance of submission. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Can I say there's an attack on you every day to get you out of sorts? Sure. Sure. The devil wants to get your emotions all caught up to where you're certainly um, in a state that is contrary to love. Do you ever wonder why there's so much prejudice in the world? Now, I know we don't, you know, that's taboo, and we're not supposed to say that we have prejudice. But prejudice simply means prejudge people. And we prejudge people most of the time based upon how they look. If somebody looks like a bum, we call them a bum. They might not be a bum. They might be the most wealthy person you've ever seen. They just choose to dress that way. If somebody doesn't look like we look, we get usually a little fearful of them. And we prejudge them. It amazes me that no matter where I go, I find this to be common. People are people. And every person has a soul. But we see this, the importance of submitting ourselves to the love of God. If we do not love right, then we will look at people wrong. We will judge people wrong. We will be filled with hate. We will be filled with malice and envy and all kinds of ill will. We see the importance of submission, keeping ourselves in the love of God. Can I say that's a chore? Everything that comes into our lives that is not of God is geared toward keeping us out of the love of God. The world says it wants inclusion, but it doesn't really want inclusion. What the world wants is they want acceptance for their lifestyle, but they do not want to accept your lifestyle. The only true acceptance and inclusion is really in the love of God. Because love, love of, the love of God looks beyond our sinful state and beyond our faults and sees our true need, and it's God. And when you keep yourself in the love of God, you'll look beyond people's appearance and beyond their lifestyles, and you'll see what they really need, and they need Jesus. We see the importance of seeking. Look at verse 21. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The importance of seeking the mercy of God. The Bible says, Seeking ye shall find. How many times do we catch ourselves really seeking for the mercy of God? A lot of times we seek for the judgment of God against people who have ideologies against ours. How many times do you find yourself praying, God in your wrath remember mercy? We need to seek God's mercy, not His judgment. His judgment is eternal and His judgment is damnation. We need the mercy of God. And can I say, we as believers need His mercy every day. How much more the world needs His mercy? So we need to be seeking His mercy and seeking after His mercy and seeking His mercy upon other people. You know why sinners sin? That's their nature. That's what you did before you got saved. But unfortunately, sometimes we get to where we forget what we used to be. And so we need to ask God to send mercy to folks. Many times they're acting the way they act and they don't have any, any clue as to why. 
and what they really need is the mercy of God in their life. So we see the importance of these things, but then we notice these verses take a turn and show us the importance of souls. You see, without the scriptures, without praying, without submitting to the love of God and seeking for the mercy of God, we'll lose sight of the most important thing and why Jesus came in the first place. He came seeking to save that which was lost. And in these verses, we find the importance of souls. And of some, have compassion, making a difference. And others, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. We're not to hate the person, we're to hate what sin does to the person. But we're to never lose sight of the importance of the soul. Some people you can love to God. Some people you got to scare to God. Some people, heaven gets them to God, and some people, it takes hell to get them to God. But of all things, if we have the right foundation from the Scripture, our faith is right, our prayer life is right, our submission to the love of God is right, and our seeking the mercy of God is right, guess what? We will be able to discern how to have compassion on folks. And so with that little thought, in the next few minutes that I have left, I want to give you just a little thought I got after Brother Jordan said that he wasn't going to be able to make it. I want to give you a little thought on having compassion. Those of you that sacrifice to bring in suitcases and to bring in toys and office supplies and and to be honest with you, it really wasn't a sacrifice, was it? A lot of us got to clean out our closets from old suitcases we wanted to throw away anyway. And then, really, in the scope of how God has blessed us, what's a toy here and a toy there? Uh, I think Miss Annette and I went to Kroger's when they was having like 80% off the school supplies and we was able to buy like $150 worth of school supplies for 15 bucks. That was not a sacrifice. But when we show compassion and we go beyond what is expected of us, it impacts people's lives. Having compassion requires something. It requires of us giving a part of ourselves to someone who needs some, some help and something greater than their circumstance. Thank God for a giving church. A lot of times people may wonder, why do we support so many missionaries? Because we need to have compassion. It's only by the grace of God you wasn't born in a third world country or a country with no economy and where you're living in a grass hut and having dirt floors. And I know you don't think those places exist, but there's a lot more people living like that than living like we live. The choir sings that song, Brother Clint sings it, I'm blessed, blessed, blessed. We are blessed. And when we show compassion on others, that is the most Christ-like that we can be. So I thought about having compassion and the importance of giving, because it requires giving. First of all, if you're going to have compassion, it requires giving an effort. Every one of us are busy. Every one of us has a life. Every one of us has within our lives responsibilities and requirements. Every one of us lives our life and, and hopefully in seeking to be fulfilled and enjoy life and uh, a lot of things in your life, whether it be working or whether it be around the house or whether it be uh, with your family, you, you have a life and your life consumes you. It should, it's your life. You hopefully aren't trying to live somebody else's life. You're, of all men, most miserable. But you're living your life. And part of your life is being a part of Emmanuel Baptist Church. And, and part of your life is being a Christian. And you, you pray and you seek the Lord and you come to church. And that's part of your life. 
Well, having compassion requires giving an effort which causes you to move outside of your life and impact somebody else's life. That takes effort. Because nobody in this room has enough time. You can't get everything done in your life, let alone take time to impact somebody else's life. So it takes giving an effort. Now notice I didn't say it said giving a great effort, just give an effort. Sometimes just a little effort goes a long ways. And what I have found that a lot of times when you give a little effort and you see how it impacts, then all of a sudden it inspires you to give more effort. Because you realize the impact and that it's worth maybe taking away from your life to give to somebody else's life. And that is truly sacrifice. But it starts with giving an effort. If you're going to have compassion, you have to give an effort. If you're an introvert, it's a big effort to get outside of your comfort zone to impact somebody else because you're comfortable just being an introvert. If you're a miser, it takes a big effort because you don't like giving anything. Hmm. If you're so busy, you're thinking, where do I have time to give effort? And still, it's giving effort. So if you're going to have compassion, you must realize it requires giving an effort. Can I say this? Anytime you give an effort, your labor in the Lord's not in vain. God takes note of that. Now, God knows who can and who can't and how much one can and how much one can't, and God's the one that weighs all that out. The little widow gave two mites. A lot of people looked down on that, thought, that's not much, but God said she gave all she had. She gave great effort. Those that give out of their abundance, God said that didn't really cost them much. But it does require giving effort. Can I say this? Sometimes having compassion is giving an ear. Sometimes people just want somebody to listen to them. They feel like they have no voice. They feel like they're all alone. They feel like they're in quicksand and their life is caving in on them. Remember I made the comment about quicksand a few weeks ago and said you don't see quicksand anymore. Remember back when we grew up, all the Westerns had quicksand and everybody from Tarzan fell in quicksand. The new Star Wars movie has quicksand. Somebody was listening. <laughs> Bob says, who cares? It's not really quicksand. It just falls through this stuff and they land in a cave. But anyway. But sometimes our lives make us feel like we're being sucked in and we can't get out. And then having compassion and giving an ear sometimes will pull people out of their quicksand. To just know somebody cares. It's amazing when you surrender to preach and then you surrender to pastor and you, you, you know... You have no idea what all that is. And even though I've been doing it a long time, I'm still learning on the job. But one of the things you never think about uh, with a pastor is a pastor has to be a counselor. Sometimes people come to you with their problems. Now, Brother Bob, that's the most helpless I always feel because I wish I had a magic wand and I could make their problems go away, but I can't make their problems go away. All I can do is point them to the Lord. But I've found that people think that I am the best counselor when I don't say anything at all. When I just listen to them. Sometimes having compassion is just giving an ear. Sometimes people need to vent. And sometimes people just need to know somebody cares. And when you can give an effort by taking time out of your busy, tremendously busy schedule to listen to somebody else, it can impact them greatly. I thought about this. Sometimes having compassion requires giving an embrace. Sometimes somebody needs a hug. Somebody, sometimes somebody needs more than just an ear and an effort. Somebody needs to know you really care. Sometimes that embrace might be taking them out to dinner or helping them with their prescription or putting a little gas in their car, maybe just putting your arms around them, telling them, you know, I don't have much to give, but 
I am here for you and I can pray for you. Sometimes it's just an embrace. Why do you think that on occasion during the invitation period I call you to be real sensitive to mind the Lord that somebody just might need to hear a thank you or somebody might need to just hear that somebody cares about them because every now and then somebody does need to hear. Somebody needs an embrace. And so having compassion and giving an effort and giving an ear, sometimes you've got to give an embrace to people. Sometimes people really need to know that they're loved. There's some people look in the mirror and all they see is tragedy and ugly and no one cares. And when somebody goes out of their way to show them that they care, that can impact them greatly. The last time I was in St. Lucia in May, um, one of the men, Brother Shane's father, Brother Max Seal, made the comment when we gave out the letters that some of you had written to them. He made the comment, he said, a lot of people have told us they love us, but Brother Foster's church has proven they love us. See, when you look at that and you see that building, by the way, we, most of which you helped build, and you see people sitting there, you think, well, they don't have any problems, but you don't see the great need. Those people have nothing. And they're serving the same God we serve, and they read the same Bible we read, and they see how great God is, and they sit there wondering, really, is God great? And then people have compassion and send Christmas gifts to their children. And by the way, most of those children don't go to that church. Most of those children come from a ghetto. And when I talk about a ghetto, I'm talking about people living in little tin huts stacked on top of each other. Or, you know, the kids look for a rock to find to play with. Dirt floors. Their only hope of eating is somebody gives them some rice and their father catches some fish that day. And they get to come and hear people tell them about Jesus and get Christmas gifts and get a meal like they've never had. That's having compassion. That's impacting people. That's embracing people. And it really didn't cost us much, did it? Last thing about having compassion. It requires giving everlasting life. No. We aren't the giver of everlasting life, but we can give them the gospel and tell them how they can have everlasting life. That is the most compassionate thing you can do, is tell people about Jesus. And is that not what Jude is telling us to do? For us to make certain we're right and in a position to where we can offer everlasting life to those who don't have it. How can we offer it? We can give them Jesus. We can point them to the one who gave us everlasting life. So, as we're about to enter a new year, have compassion on people. Make certain that you're in a position that you can have compassion on people. Because I've learned this, life is a series of ebbs and flows. Sometimes you're on the mountain, sometimes you're in the valley. When you're on the mountaintop, and verses 20 and 21 is your life, have compassion. Because when you're in the valley, you're going to need somebody to have compassion on you. The Bible does say you reap what you sow. If you give people a hard time, guess what's going to happen when you hit your valley? You're going to hit a hard time. So have compassion on people. You say, they don't deserve it, neither did you, but Jesus came to you anyway. Well, but there, listen, you don't have to go to St. Lucia to find people in need. All you got to do is look out the window, unless you live on Anders Lane. Uh, but look around. Folks are looking for compassion. Just show them compassion, and you will impact their life and make a difference. 
If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.